So let's talk about neurons themselves. Uh, they are the basic structural unit of the nervous system, so they're the main thing that sends signals through the nervous system. Um, but this doesn't mean that they are all of the nervous system. Um, and in fact, you may have heard that uh, you only use 10% of your brain. That's actually because neurons only make up about 10% of the brain. That other 90% of the brain is actually other cells that help the neurons do their job. So please don't think that you have some magic 90% of your brain that you can rely on or somehow magically discover. Uh, you have, you are using your whole brain and what we're working on in school is to get that part of your brain to be able to do more. Um, neurons conduct what we call nerve impulses and that's just another term for an action potential. And that is the signal that, car that carries uh, information from one place in the body to another. And it may be, you know, from one place in the brain to another as well. Uh, neurons are different because they have a very high metabolic rate. Uh, so they use a lot, of, a lot of oxygen. They live a very long time. Most of your neurons actually uh, live your whole life. So um, most of them don't do mitosis and cannot be replaced. Uh, they are non-mitotic. They can't divide. Uh, they are excitable, so they can produce electrical signals, and they are conductive, meaning that they can send those electrical signals. And that's what we talked about in the first part. All right, so here's just a review of all those parts of the neuron. And you'll notice this one looks slightly different. We'll talk about that because this one's got this, this blue wrapping around it. And we'll talk about that. So the cell body, the neuron's control center, because that is where the nucleus is, and also most of the other cytoplasm stuff. Uh, this is also called the soma. You remember soma means body. So the soma is the cell body. Uh, it signals that are received on the dendritic spines travel through the dendrites to the cell body, and then the cell body is going to integrate that and then send it on uh, to the axon. When we look at a microscope slide, the cell body stains darkest because of the uh, nucleus, and so we can see it more easily. The dendrites are extensions from the cell body that receive nerve impulses. More dendrites means that the, signal, the cell can receive more signals. Dendritic spines are uh, little protuberances on the dendrites. And these can be added and subtracted very quickly to form new connections as you learn things. The axon hillock connects the cell body to the axon. And then the axon is usually the longest extension from the cell body. Almost all neurons have one axon. We're just going to talk about the ones that have one. We're not going to deal with uh, other ones. Although some of them do have little branches called axon collaterals. And then the um, axon terminals are the telodendria. These are the little branches at the end that then transmit that signal to a number of different places, sometimes a number of different cells. And they usually end in synaptic knobs, and you remember those are also called boutons. Then the neurolemocytes are uh, cells, they're also called Schwann cells, for the men who uh, discovered them, uh, are cells that wrap around the axon. These are only going to be found uh, in the peripheral nervous system. So I'm going to add that here. In the peripheral nervous system, there we go, uh, we have neurocytes and Schwann cells. Neurocytes, Schwann cells are the same thing. And what they do is each of these things is one cell. It wraps itself around and it insulates that um, the axon. Uh, and essentially, where these, where this... Uh, these cells are wrapped around, uh, there aren't as many channels for sodium, potassium, and not as many sodium, potassium pumps. And so the signal can't leak out. You can't have uh, sodium and potassium ions leaking out 
uh, as the signal passes through this insulation created by these Schwann cells. Um, altogether, the Schwann cells are called the myelin sheath. And we'll talk about how it's a little bit different in the brain, but it's still called the myelin sheath. So all of these cells together are the myelin sheath. And then the gaps between the cells are called the neurofibril nodes or the nodes of Ranvier. Uh, those are the gaps in the myelin sheath. And we'll talk about how that works. Okay, so when we look at the microscope slide of nervous tissue, we see the big cell body here. We see the really distinct nucleus inside. And we have all these little projections sticking off of it. You can see the axon hillock, the axon, and then you can see the dendrites branching off. Um, and this all looks really, really clear. They don't always look that way. And in fact, when we look at a microscope slide, what we see is this. We see, an, it's called a neuron smear because they actually take neuron tissue smear it onto the microscope slide. And it's a lot harder on a regular neuron smear to tell which is the um, dendrite and which is the axon. And since you can't see how long they are, um, it can be really hard to tell. In some slides, you can actually see the myelin around the axon. Uh, in this one, it's not really very clear, although this one looks like, you can see here, it kind of looks like maybe it's got some myelin around it. Uh, so basically, unless I find one that's very, very clear, I'm not going to ask you which of the extensions uh, here is a dendrite and which is uh, an axon. What I will ask you about, though, are all these little black things, those tiny little dots, and those are actually other cells. Those are called glial cells. So this neuron smear contains neurons plus glial cells. Uh, and glial cells are those supporting cells that help the neurons do their job. And we'll talk in a minute about all the different kinds of glial cells. Now, uh, when we look at um, uh, where a, an axon meets a muscle cell, we see these neuromuscular junctions uh, that are ex like what bro broad and wide synaptic knobs. And you remember these from when we were talking about the muscles. So this is skeletal muscle tissue. Here's, this is one skeletal muscle cell kind of at a low magnification, so we can't really see the striations very well. But you can see this axon comes in here and then branches into all of these axon terminals, and each of these has a neuromuscular junction or a synaptic knob at the end. All right, now there are actually several types of neurons. The one that I drew for you doesn't look like this at all, does it? The one that I drew for you looks more like this, and it's called a multipolar neuron. And a multipolar neuron is one where there are a lot of processes coming off of the cell body. One of those processes is going to be an axon. That axon may have collaterals, may not. Um, and depending on where the cell is uh, and what kind of uh, information it's carrying, it may have only a few dendrites or it may have tons of dendrites. Okay, so that's multipolar, lots and lots of poles. If a cell has only two poles coming out of the cell body, then it's bipolar, two poles. So the uh, olfactory uh, neurons, uh, these are uh, bipolar neurons. Also the cells in the retina of your eye, the ones that actually process visual information, they're going to be these bipolar neurons. So we have dendrites that then fuse um, together to carry signals to the cell body and then from the cell body the axon carries the signals till it synapses with another cell. And then we also have unipolar neurons and these are a little different. We've got a cell body and then we've got one process that comes off of the cell body, so unipolar. We've got dendrites, and when they fuse together, they actually become an axon. So this is a, a kind of unusual. Um, and in this class, we're not really going to talk about why it is that this is an axon, just except for now that it is. So we've got a peripheral process 
the signal comes into the cell body, it gets coordinated in the cell body, and then it continues along the axon until it uh, synapses somewhere. The somatic sensory neurons in your body are all unipolar like this. So uh, imagine that these dendrites are just, say, under the surface of the skin. They're receiving touch sensation, and they're sending that touch sensation along these really long axons to the cell body. And the cell body is part of a ganglion right, by, uh, right outside the spinal cord. And then, so the cell gets integrated there and then travels into the, spi the spinal cord, and this is going to synapse inside the spinal cord. So that's how those work. So we have unipolar neurons, bipolar neurons with two processes off the cell body, and then multipolar neurons with many, many, many processes off the cell body. So here's an example of how those work together. Here's a sensory neuron uh, that carries a signal to a ganglion. There's the cell body in the ganglion that then synapses with another neuron that is entirely within the spinal cord. Any neuron entirely within the central nervous system is called an interneuron. And an interneuron is going to literally stand between other neurons. So they're always entirely within the central nervous system, and they're going to coordinate communication between other neurons. So in this case, this is coordinating between a sensory neuron and a motor neuron. And then it's also going to have, usually, um, axon collaterals that will branch off and synapse with another neuron that's going to carry the signal up or down um, the, the, or sorry, up the spinal cord and then from the spinal cord down. So those are the inner neurons. Um, and notice that this cell here, the sensory neuron, is a unipolar neuron. It's got this one cell body with one pole. The interneuron is multipolar. And then the motor neuron is also multipolar. So the motor neurons for your somatic motor division, the ones signaling to your skeletal muscles, these are all going to be multipolar, and the cell body is actually within the spinal cord. The axon then goes all the way from the spinal cord all the way out to the muscle. There you go. And in this case, to the brachialis muscle. Now, the ganglion, of course, is that group of cell bodies. It's going to integrate the responses and act like kind of like a mini brain. Uh, the plural, of course, is ganglia. Now, I'm going to pause there and uh, see if I can finish this as a Zoom meeting, which is easier to do subtitles on, I realize. So I'm going to stop there, and uh, I will come back with another video in just a moment.